Director of Innovation Engineering for the Bakey Heart and Vascular Centre. Now, tonight I'm delighted to have on the show all the way from Manchester in the UK, Dr. Elliot Street, CEO of Innovis Medical, and Ben Huddleston, Central Midwest Regional Manager of Innovis Medical. Now, they're here tonight to discuss the future of surgical training. Before we proceed, I'd like to invite the audience into our discussions. So please submit your questions via web at polyv.com using the Bakey as the username or text the Bakey to 37607 alongside your question. You can also add your question into the live YouTube stream. And I'd also like to bring to the audience's attention a special event happening on December the 5th here in Houston at the ION. Pumps and Pipes is back. We are back to in-person events. After two years being in the studio of the pandemic, we're back bigger, better. We're relaunching, rebranding, and rebooting the entire program. So please join us and register for December the 5th. You have an idea there of the participants. We'll be talking about Web3, AI, XR, and robotics. And I'm delighted to understand that Innovis Medical have just signed up and they will be there exhibiting on that day. So on that note, I'd like to turn it over to my special guest this evening, Dr. Elliot Street. Elliot, welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Joe, for having us, and uh, and good evening to everyone that's um, that's dialing in live. Uh, really, really pleased to be here, and uh, and thanks for inviting Ben along with us as well. So I think you've got a video you're going to play, right? That was just accepted and just launched last week at ACS, correct? I am. That's that's quite right. Um, uh, we're, uh, rather than starting with a, an introductory slide of uh, of who I am, what I do, and then introducing Ben, we're going to get straight into a little movie for everyone. Um, so hopefully everyone's got the popcorn uh, at the ready. Um, so we're, we're going to get stuck in, play that movie, and then um, following that, we're going to uh, introduce you to some of the technology that we have here at Innovus. Um, uh, and as you said. Um, uh, there, Stuart. We're really excited to be presenting that at Pumps and Pipes um, in a couple of weeks' time as well. So let's let's jump into the movie and then we'll take it from there. Cheating surgical mastery is a journey, not a destination. You will begin with excitement as you explore, you learn, you progress, and you unlock your potential. There will be challenges, pressure, highs and lows. But with each practice, to each procedure, and expertise and in time you share these with others guiding the future of surgery and always maintaining your own capacity to grow no matter where you are on your journey to mastery we are with you every step of the way Surgical training remastered. So I hope that um, I hope that came through uh, well for everyone. Um, and as I said, um, I hope you've got the popcorn at the ready because we've uh, we've got a lot of videos uh, to show you this evening. So it's going to be hopefully a very engaging talk, and it's not just going to be myself and Ben here um, uh, wittering on. Um, but but who, who is it that is going to be wittering on to you when, when we are speaking? So um, as Stuart said, there, my name's Elliot Street. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Innovus Medical. Um, a quick background to me: I'm a physician by training. I trained in the University of Manchester and then the Oxford. University hospitals um, uh, before coming into full time um, with with Innovus Medical, which I founded whilst I was at medical school, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about our journey. But uh, before I do, I'd, I'd like to introduce Ben. Um, I'll let him uh, say his piece, and then um, we'll, we'll crack on with some uh, some more background to what Innovus does and, uh, and our story so far. Uh, thanks a lot, Elliot. Yeah, my name is Ben Huddleston. Um, <clears throat> 
I originally actually uh, went to the University of Texas. Uh, I'm a native Texan, so um, I'm located in Austin, so not too far from Houston Methodist. Um, so I went to the University of Texas. I actually got my degree um, in nutritional sciences. Um, I then went off to chiropractic school. Um, after practicing uh, for about a year in the Houston area, um, I kind of worked my way into the medical device world. Um, I was a um, territory manager uh, with the medical device company for about three years. Um, then I worked my way to um, the company I'm with now, with Innovus. Uh, it's an amazing company. Um, the future is extremely bright. I'm very happy to be here and uh, just couldn't be happier to be part of this team. Great. Thanks, Ben. And um, what, what I'm going to do is, as I go along, um, I'm going to bring you in and uh, give that voice to the to the local region, obviously, with you based there in, in Texas. Um, it's, it's great to have Innovus representation on the ground in Texas, and I think it would be great for the audience to hear some of your experiences um, so far representing the products. But uh, I guess the, the question is, what are those products? What do we do? Um, you can see on the screen there that um, Innovus provides connected surgical training, and I'm going to um, tell you a little bit more about that um, as we go along. Before I do, I want to tell you about um, the things that drive us forward as a business. Now, we're a purpose-led business, and our purpose is to improve surgical care through connected surgical training. That's literally why we're here on the planet as a business and as a company. Uh, and to allow us to do that, we have a really clear mission that we focus on. And our mission is to become the world's partner for surgical training technology. And we know that we can deliver on our purpose and our mission by delivering on our core values of um, generating and creating uh, accessible, affordable and highly functional surgical training technologies. Now, uh, before I go on and tell you about some of those technologies, I want to tell you about the problem that we that we solve as a business. Um, and that's this antiquated approach to surgical training that, that um, even with other technologies around in the market for a number of decades now, we still see this antiquated approach. It's this idea of see one, do one, teach one, where the majority of the early learning curve is still at the patient bedside. And as a clinician-led business and a clinician-founded business, um, we look at that and think, in today's day and age, that's simply not acceptable. Why have we not moved the early learning curve um, away from the patient bedside into a simulated safe environment? Now, we, we still believe that it's very important to still learn surgery in, in, in theatre. So we're not saying we need to replace it all, but we need to replace a lot of the early learning curve with the simulated environment. And the questions are, why has that not happened yet? Uh, until, of course, Innovus came along. And we found that there are four main barriers that have stopped this. The first of this is cost. So traditional simulators I mentioned have, have been around prior to Innovus coming along. Um, they use virtual reality technology. It's very expensive to develop and therefore very expensive to deploy. It means that we end up with this sort of mainframe style system, which leads into the next issue, which is a lack of access. These mainframe systems are often in hard to reach parts of hospitals and they're not, they're not catering to the modern day surgical resident or surgical trainee. Um, now, Leading on from there, the use of virtual reality is really rooted, embedded in, um, air, in the airline industry, uh, teaching pilots how to fly. Uh, and the reason why VR is so useful for that is because it's generating what we call macroscopic haptics, so turbulence of a plane is a big movement. VR, using software and motors to tell you how something should feel, it's very good for that. But in our opinion, as clinicians and physicians, um, uh, using VR to generate haptics for surgery, where we have microscopic haptics. So how should this blood vessel feel? How should this soft tissue feel? This soft tissue feel? It's not fit for purpose. And then there's a final issue, which is a lack of integration into the modern day um, environment of a surgical trainee. There's a disconnect between our simulated environment, uh, where we're learning surgery, and also our live theater environment until today and you've you've seen our solution to that or at least part of our solution um, in that opening video uh, and that opening movie which is totem uh, our newly launched di digital surgery platform now what isn't new are the products that we uh, that we have for surgeons to learn how to operate on this is our growing portfolio of surgical simulators now we create simulators uh, for laparoscopic surgery, we create simulators for hysteroscopy surgery, and we have many simulators coming uh, for other forms of minimally invasive surgery. And what Totem has done, this newly launched platform, as, as Stuart mentioned at the top of the, uh, uh, the, the top of this, we, we launched it last week in the USA at the American College of Surgeons show. Uh, it was really, really well received. Uh, what that platform has allowed us to do is create a growing ecosystem of connected simulators 
that allow us to aggregate all of the data for surgeons into one place and do many other things, which we'll talk about as we, we go along here. But I think it's important to, to share um, our simulators and how um, we view the world and how we view the best way to solve those four issues I, I spoke about at the, at the top of this, and so that we can shift uh, the early learning curve predominantly into the simulated environment for surgeons. And one of those approaches is this, this is our hub and spoke model. Um, you can see here that Totem sits over the top of our platform. This is our LAP AR, um, which is a high fidelity, so very realistic laparoscopic simulator, keyhole surgery simulator. You'll get to see it working in a moment, so don't worry. And this hub and spoke model, which consists of the more traditional mainframe system, powering many, many what we call take home or, or mobile systems, has completely changed the way in which we're delivering surgical training. These simulators at the bottom of this picture provide exactly the same learning experience as the mainframe or hub system, but they can be used in the home of a surgical resident, they can be used on the move, they can be used next to theatres, they can be used anywhere. It's training without boundaries. And that you're going to see this working in a moment because we have some very, very exciting technology that powers this. But I want you to think about this. In that picture, those simulators are plugged into a laptop. This is really, really important to remember when I show you the next couple of slides. We do not use headsets, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go along. I think it's important to, to think as well, Innovus, although we're talking about Totem, something we launched last week, um, we, we've had simulators uh, in the market for, for, for 10 years now. 76% um, of the NHS use our simulators for training their surgeons. Um, the, the, the introduction of Totem is something that has pulled all of the, uh, the digital platforms together. And here's another example of, of that digital platform powering this hub and spoke model for hysteroscopy. So this is our HIST AR platform and our Bazzini hysteroscopy platform being powered by Totem. And again, I'm going to show you a little bit more about how those work in a moment. But, but first, um, I'm going to show you LAP AR. So um, the, the, the shots you've just seen are, are um, effectively what we call laparoscopic box trainers or simulators. And sitting inside that box, you can see here is a synthetic soft tissue. And these instruments that have come into the simulator, these are not avatar instruments. They're not digital. Those are real instruments. And interestingly, what we can do is we can place any brand of instrument we like into this simulator and start operating with it. And the reason that's important is it allows our surgeons to train with the tools they can actually use or will use in theatre, not some simulated tools or some different tools or different brand. And what you can see here is this surgeon is tensioning the appendix and they're dissecting the meso appendix. But Surgery is not just about haptic touch, so how does it feel? This is getting natural haptics from this soft tissue model. It's also about decision-making and cognitive training, which this platform also does. So this hybrid platform is not only a hybrid of soft tissues providing natural haptics, which you can see with the real instruments operating on simulated soft tissues, and this digital environment creating an immersive, uh, immersive experience, but it's also giving you that cognitive and decision-making training that you get from other platforms. So this hybridized approach is bringing many, many different types of training platform together in one place. Now, um, for those that are not familiar with this, this is a laparoscopic appendicectomy. What would happen here is this surgeon would carry on dissecting the meso appendix. They can then place loops or clips or whatever they like in there onto the appendix. They'll dissect the appendix and away they go. Now, what's going on that you can't see here is we are using computer vision to watch those instruments while they're in the field of view and get lots of rich data on how well the surgeon is operating, how far they traveled, how smooth were they. Um, and all of that data is getting plugged into Totem so that they can review that data in retrospect. Now, I also wanted to play this video. This is um, an example, and there's a bit of um, sound to this one, so I apologize for that. But this is an example of the hist -AR simulator at work and the Bazzini system. Now, this is a simulated fibroid in the uterus, incredibly realistic soft tissues, giving what we call natural haptics. And that's a real device with real fluid management going on. So um, when it comes to simulation, this is as realistic as you can get. And traditionally, you have models like this that would use synthetic soft tissues, but you'd lack digitalization. We wouldn't be able to capture this video footage. We wouldn't be able to track how well people are performing. And that's what Totem does. It brings together this ecosystem of simulators. Um, now, it's all well and good hearing from the founder about how good our technology is and, and, um, and hearing from, from Ben, who I'm going to bring in in a moment, um, about how good the technology is. But it's probably very useful for you to hear from one of our customers. So uh, I'm going to give um, a voice of our customer here some airtime. I'm Mohamed Mabrouk. 
I'm a consulting gynecologist in uh, Cambridge University uh, Hospitals. I'm also an adjunct professor of gynecology in uh, the Southern University of Denmark. And I'm the president of the Middle East Society of Gynecological Endoscopy. We used to train our trainees, uh, especially in laparoscopy, on the old model, so that you see, you do, you do assisted, and there is no simulation. But obviously, with the standards of care that we are obliged and are very keen to offer now, training before operating on a patient is more than essential. So before uh, uh, the Lapinovus trainer, we used to train our trainees either on box trainers or on virtual reality simulators. And uh, to be honest, what I liked in the Lapinovus system is that it's a hybrid between both of them, apart from the other things that it offers, but it's a hybrid between the virtual reality simulation and having a real, let's say, or near real touch of the uh, tissues, which obviously helps in training. So that's some really powerful feedback from uh, Professor Mabrook there at uh, Cambridge University Hospitals, mm -hmm. big famous hospital for us in the UK. Um, and actually, Stuart, if it's okay, I wanted to just pause and, and bring Ben in here and, and, and get a voice from Ben, because those technologies that, that I've shown you there, as I say, they're, they're widely used in, in the United Kingdom and actually in 76 countries worldwide. Um, but, but actually, they're becoming more and more well known across not only Texas, but the rest of the United States. And Ben has recently been spending time across Texas, but actually in, in Houston itself. Um, and Ben, it would be great to hear from you about um, the, the feedback that the surgeons um, across Texas and the US that you've spoken with, what's their feedback on uh, our hybrid approach and our natural haptics first? It'd be great to hear, hear from you from yeah. on that. Yeah, so the surgeons themselves love it, obviously, from kind of an institutional perspective, um, you know, just especially uh, in residency programs, uh, they can really see, they have, you know, a good vision for how it can, you know, apply to their program and how they can assess, you know, the, the residents um, and, you know, kind of help them along in their training. Uh, ob obviously, it's extremely important for them to get this practice, you know, before they're ever in a case. Um, so, you know, that's obviously one of the main things that I've seen. Um, the residents themselves love it. Uh, especially the younger residents who haven't, you know, had much time practicing in a case, um, you know, actually getting the haptics, the, the actual feel of cutting through tissue, um, you know, something that I don't think we've mentioned yet are, um, and I'm, I know you're going to get there, but the software overlay and how um, you can actually trigger bleeds. Um, that's something that's extremely cool, uh, you know, for the residents. Um, but yeah, you know, all across Texas, uh, from Houston, all the way out to, to Lubbock um, and, you know, all throughout my region up into the Dakotas and uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, it's being extremely well received, um, have lots of interest from, you know, the large uh, residency programs. Uh, but not just that, uh, many medical device companies are starting to kind of expand um, and, you know, utilize this product to, to demonstrate their products, because as you mentioned, um, it's, you know, it's instrument agnostic. So, you know, if they can, they can show the, these products using their own instruments, um, and it's a really powerful way for, you know, for them to demo their products. Um, so uh, it's got a lot of applications. It's amazing technology. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's exciting. Great. Thanks. Man. I'm glad you, you, you brought up a really good point there, which was um, which, which I probably didn't um, major on, which is that instrument agnostic element. Um, we we started this by stating what our mission is as a business. And our mission is to become the world's partner for surgical training. Now, surgical training is not just delivered at residency programs. It's delivered in theatre with other physicians. It's delivered to the residents in theatre and out of theatre and hopefully more and more in, in the simulated environment. But it's also heavily delivered by um, the, the medical technology companies when it comes to safely training people how to use their technologies and introducing those technologies in the first place. And, and Ben, I, I'm so glad you did highlight this because I, I just want to drill into what we mean by instrument agnostic. The bit you haven't seen yet um, and hopefully we get a chance to, to show you and we'll probably um, have a bit of discussion before we do that, which is where all the data that we're capturing at that simulated level is going. The data that we capture on those instruments you've just seen in that video, if I take 
manufacturer instruments one, then manufacturer number two's instrument, then the man manufacturer number three's instrument, and I put them in consecutively, the platform will track each of those different instruments. We don't need to make specific changes for it to track a different type of instrument. And that's a really, really powerful thing that we're finding for our, our device company customers. Um, and, and again, the, the reason for our approach to this is to be that partner for surgical training. We want to facilitate training that's being done in all corners of the world and make sure it's been done to the highest possible level. So, so thanks for highlighting that, Ben. Um, and, and the complications piece uh, you, you mentioned in the middle of invasive surgery piece, that, that's uh, something that we're finding is, um, is becoming more and more prevalent and more and more important for the senior trainees, so the senior surgeons. So they may know how to do the procedure, um, but we want to challenge them. So it's this adage of, as a, as a as a senior resident and then an attending physician you may know how to hoist the mainsail in calm waters but we're going to test you to make sure you can hoist the mainsail uh, in a storm and that's what being a chief resident and, and an attending physician is all about ben before before i move on um the bit we probably haven't measured on uh, we've showed some videos of our minimally invasive, so laparoscopic simulators and how they're high fidelity, the hysteroscopy taking out an incredibly realistic fibroid. But what Totem has allowed us to do now for the very first time is digitalize open surgery, so basic surgical skills and other open surgical procedures. Um, you were at ACS last week with us, and we were demonstrating this a great deal. Um, it would be great to hear some of the feedback that you got on the open surgery and, and the, the use of the Totem mobile app to, to capture those uh, and, again, uh, deliver a digitalized um, learning experience. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the convenience of it, I think that's probably the main thing that I was hearing as far as the feedback goes. Um, I mean, you can download the app, connects you directly to you know the Totem software, uh, it's all cloud-based, so you can do it literally from anywhere in the world. Um, I mean, it's basically just a digitalized proctoring service almost from, from a, a basic surgical skills standpoint. Um, the applications are literally endless. Um, the disciplines you know, across the healthcare field can use this technology, um, obviously from a surgical standpoint, but you know, even um, you know, um, practicing uh, with or training within um, you know, surgical technology. Um, you know, that's nursing programs, surgical technology, chiropractic even, um, you know, it's, it's literally, it turns your phone into a proctoring service and it allows you to perform certain tasks, connects you with the, um, the assessor, um, in the case of, you know, residency program, it'll connect you with the, um, you know, the residency director. Um, and, you know, it allows them to kind of assess your training, kind of make sure that you're, you know, staying on track. Um, and it just, it makes everything so much more convenient. And it's kind of a wonder this, you know, hasn't been created before now, but I'm so glad that obviously Anibis is doing that. Right. Thanks, Ben. Um, so uh, moving on then, I think there's there's a few nice ways of describing, um, and ho hopefully uh, I've done a good job of um, explaining very quickly explaining some very very complex augmented reality technology and and, and the um the incredible um, paradigm shift that our hybrid approach of natural haptics and soft tissues and digitalizing those is doing what i want to do is measure on some of the features of the totem platform in the part of the platform you haven't seen you've just seen the local level where we're digitalizing those tissues but the part of the platform you haven't seen there's some really really interesting pieces so the first of those is this concept that Totem is guiding the way to surgical success. Uh, and it allows us to do that by connecting mentors, peers, and examiners all in one easy to use place so that not only can we share best practice for surgical technique, um, but we're able to provide distance and really scalable certification and examination of surgical technique. The next point and the next piece that um, Totem is majoring on is the concept of harnessing data to transform our surgical training. I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times here that we're using computer vision to look at instruments in the field of view and capture rich, rich data on those. But we're also capturing video data and putting that into the platform. So that objective performance that we're able to show and the progress that we're able to show allows surgical residents and, and more experienced surgeons the ability to see where they need to make improvements and how they can change and improve their operative flow. So the next important thing to major on with, with Totem is that we're unlocking 
the power of practice with this platform. And I mentioned there that this video capture is very important. That simulated appendicectomy you saw and that simulated fibroid that you saw, the myomectomy, whilst people are doing that, they're able to capture that video and we send that video of the procedures up into the Totem platform where we can provide multi-directional collaborative feedback. This is not about one-way feedback. You did this badly, do this again. It's about showing expertise and sharing expertise. It's about asking questions. It's about making notes on one's own performance. And this is a really powerful part of Totem. And um, I think probably here, the final piece I'm going to highlight about Totem um, is the concept of dynamic assessment with universal recognition. So the Totem platform is um, uh, accredited by the, the Royal College of Surgeons of England. Uh, the platform allows you to um, create your own certification template so you can issue certificates such as OSATs or OASIS certificates or whatever you're using at a local level. And because of its accreditation, we can also um, gain CPD points or CME points and issue these for time spent training, which is um, a real paradigm shift and a real game changer when it comes to surgical simulation, um, because now our surgical trainees and residents are able to collect CPD and CME points for all that time spent on the simulation which before there has not been a platform that's achieved that. So hopefully uh, myself and Ben there have given a really good insight into um, how our ecosystem of high fidelity simulators, LAP AR, HIST AR, our open surgery products combined with Totem are solving those four problems we mentioned. We're delivering accessible, affordable, highly functional and most importantly connected surgical training. I think this is a really important thing. I've probably just hit you all with a very light white screen after lots of dark, moody ones. Um, but a really important thing here is for anyone on this call to say, that all sounds really good, um, but is there any evidence to show that this is actually having an impact? And I'm really pleased and, and very proud to say that, yes, it is. As a clinician-led uh, and a clinician-backed business, we take evidence-based training very, very seriously. We have our own clinical excellence team at Innovus full of surgeons whose job it is, is to make sure that the technology we're developing is actually having an impact. And here's some of the evidence for that impact. So um, we've, we've recently run a, a multi-center study across uh, many sites in the United Kingdom. And this was assessing the impact of introducing LAP AR and Totem on time to operate and actually um, surgical efficiency and uh, complication rates. And some, some startling outcomes came here. So we have shown with this um, study, which will be published um, in a peer review journal, um, uh, hopefully the beginning of next year, it's shown that the platform leads to a 41% reduction in time to operate and a 60% reduction in distance traveled. And there is a strong correlation between reducing distance traveled and reducing complication rates in, in, in operative um, um, scenarios. And in the United Kingdom, that has been shown to uh, offer cost savings to the NHS of over £117 million a year. And in uh, uh, US healthcare systems, um, not only are there cost savings, but of course there are volume and, and, uh, and efficiency measures that this has an impact on. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, that information. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, to getting into some of it again with, with, with Stuart. Um, but hopefully I've um, uh, given you all and Ben has given you all a, a really good feel for how Innovus Medical are remastering surgical training. OK, guys, thank you very much for that um, really, really good presentation. Or, um, I've actually, in the background, I was putting together a few pictures that I just got off the internet of people actually using this system. Um, if we just go to my slide, guys. Uh, okay, so again, this was just taking off your Twitter account. But again, I just want to show the audience, this is how somebody would be, be using this, right? Now, you were saying before they don't wear a VR headset. Uh, so my question is going to be, well, how are they looking at this? But you can see here they're looking at you know, a screen in front of them. Uh, it could be a laptop screen, it could be a, a monitor, etc. But what I really wanted to get down into was the, the tissues, the synthetic tissue types that you're using, which I think that's an example in the bottom right hand corner, right? Yeah, thanks, Stuart. And uh, I, I probably should have um, I probably should have touched on that, but that's, uh, that's why we've got such a talented host to, to guide us through this and make sure we're saying all the right things. So, so thanks for that. You're quite right. 
this is what we describe lap ar and hist ar so our high fidelity platforms we describe them as headset free novel augmented reality so what does that actually mean so the first bit is pretty self explanatory we are not putting headsets on people's faces to allow them to learn how to operate and the reason being is we do not stand in theater as surgeons with headsets on our heads so it's very important to us that we're trying to get the training as close to real life as we possibly can so as you've rightly pointed out with that picture the image of the surgery and the and the video that i that i showed earlier that is streamed either onto someone's personal laptop um, or it's streamed straight onto the screen of the hub systems no headsets straight onto a 2D screen, 3D procedure. That is as realistic as you're going to get because the majority of operating is still 2D screen, 3D procedure with straight stick surgery. That's 95% of laparoscopic surgeries are done that way still. Um, I'm sure we'll come on to talking about the, the applications for this in robotic surgery. Before we do, um, talking about the tissues. We have a whole catalog of different soft tissues. The soft tissues sitting in the laparoscopic simulator you just saw, um, there are dry lab soft tissues. They're incredibly realistic. So when you tension the appendix, you can you, it feels like you're tensioning a real appendix. As you tension the appendix and dissect on the meso appendix, the more tension you put on, the, the easier it is to dissect through a plane. So it, it really does give you that natural haptics as if you're operating um last week at acs i was i was with the team there and um we had a very experienced um uh, surgeon who happens to be a medical director and he, he started operating and his feedback and response to this was just to start chuckling and to laugh because he'd never felt such a realistic uh, environment when it came to simulation he was expecting another vr platform mm. to give him these simulated or unnatural haptics but that that wasn't the case um but I mentioned that we've got a whole catalogue of soft tissues. It's not just about those dry lab tissues. That's using scissors and, and, and a pair of graspers. Um, if we want to use energy devices or morselators or radio frequency ablation devices, there's, there's, there's all of this technology on the market now that we need to be able to learn how to use safely and efficiently as surgeons. And it's our responsibility to, as the world's partner for surgical training to create technology that can do that. So in the second video you saw, um, that's a soft tissue, a synthetic soft tissue, which is effectively an organic tissue. Um, now, what that does is it behaves exactly like a fibroid and it allows you to use exactly the, the same instruments that you would use in theatre. That's energy devices, bipolar energy devices, and that's morselators. And so that's the major differentiator that we have. But while we're doing that, what we are doing is building this digital environment around the tissues to make it immersive and realistic and then uh, yeah. allow us to do other things like the cognitive so training. And, I guess and that was making. that was really going to go on my next point, um, which was why XR, like standard reality or augmented reality in the first place. And I think by showing that picture, it might be more apparent to the reviewers, sorry, the, the audience, in that if you didn't have that, you'd, you could have the synthetic tissue there. You'd be looking at something on the screen that looks synthetic, whatever. But the AR layer makes it look more realistic, correct? You're spot on. So that, that video from um, Prof. Um, um, Mabruk in, in Cambridge, he, he sums it up perfectly. We either used to have to use box trainers with synthetic tissues in to get natural haptics, very realistic haptics. But what was the problem with those? They weren't digitalized, so it wasn't very immersive. You'd, you'd be having a soft tissue model sitting in white space, mm. no immersion, not engaging, and no digitalization. So we're not tracking or getting any data on how well we're performing. And then he was he was also mentioning the, the VR side that gives you the immersion and it gives you the data, but you've now had to forego the realism of the natural haptics. And that's what we're talking about here, which is, is that hybrid simulation using augmented reality where the soft tissues give you all the feedback, but the digital environment gives you the immersion. So you get everything that you get from virtual reality and everything that you get from reality, reality merged into one. And, and going back to this, the synthetic soft tissues, et cetera, like do you guys, manufacturing like do you own the patents to that yourselves or do you subcontract out to another company like you know who's because i imagine there's a whole market like a whole area of creating realistic soft tissues like lazarus 3d for example they, they were based in houston they're now over in oregon you know they, they do 3d printed silicon uh, phantom models so maybe you want to comment a little bit the technology behind that yeah, absolutely. So uh, as a business, Innovus is, is as vertically integrated as you can get. So the quick answer is 
we own it all, we do it all in-house. Okay. Um, so yes, we develop our soft tissues. Some of them are quite generic, but some of them are, are completely unique to us, um, which have come through years and years and years of testing with our, with our clinical partners and our customers. That Innovus is, is a 10-year-old business, so we've got a decade of experience developing these synthetic soft tissues. Um, not only do we develop them, therefore we own the, the IP to them, um, on these ones, they're not patented because uh, we, we obfuscate all the IP because then we'd have to share the recipe. So, um, uh, but we, we do own all the IP to them. And then we manufacture them all. Uh, and, and the reason why I want to highlight that Stuart, is not only um, am, am I a kid that went to medical school and ended up with a massive factory full of toys. So it's, it's just the most fun thing ever when you get to go into, um, into the factory and you see these huge 3D printers, um, you, you see the silicone production, uh, you see the other soft tissue productions. Um, the reason that is important is we have built the manufacturing so we don't have to outsource it. And what that allows us to do is not give margin to other parts of the supply chain. That actually brings our costs down. And that's what allows us to nail one of those three core values as a business, which is affordability. So um, by, by taking a very difficult process and taking 10 years to work out how to do this, we've created cost savings which we then pass on to the end users so that this technology we can sell at a price that allows people to adopt in a massive scale and not just adopt them in ones and twos because if we'd made this technology that's this good and then priced it at the same price as previous technologies we won't be we won't be moving the needle um, and i'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. that's one of the reasons that we're able to do that so and what about like precision medicine is there a need to be able to get say a patient diacom scam and have their you know synthetic model created within a day to have the surgeons practice on that you know for that patient do you think there's a need there for that uh, i think that i think there is um and you see great things like the, the 3D Life Prints team and, and what they're doing there. And I think um, it, clearly there's, there is a need for that in terms of the, the way in which I think we scale that is, again, it comes back to making it such that you can do it at an affordable rate, such that instead of only having to print one of these things, if it's too costly, we can get to the point where those patient-specific um, anatomical models can be created and you can create 10 or 15 of them at a price that's that's um, acceptable enough so that the surgeon can actually do this operation not just once and not just look at the anatomy, but integrate those patient-specific anatom an an anatomical models into our platforms and then allow them to do the full procedure, mm -hmm. not once, but 10 or 15 times. So I absolutely see the, the value in that. I think the value is already there, um, but can we take that further by integrating it into other technologies? And, and I think that's um, that's a really exciting um, uh, future for for ourselves and everyone else that's that's doing that. And just just to plug, <laughs> pumps and pipes again. Um, 3D Life Prints will actually also be at um, at pumps and pipes. So maybe I put you guys together. Um, I, I just think as a research project, it would be very interesting when you could, you know, maybe someone's going in for an elective surgery, right? And maybe a week's time, whatever. Um, you get that patient data. You could get the, the 3D print, the synthetic models, use your, maybe from 3D life prints, whatever, and use your system to train on it. And technically like that resident or the surgeon could go into that procedure having done the procedure like 25 times. Right. Yeah, and and where I'm going with this, and where I'm going with this, at least to another question I've got is, how do you quantify that outcome? And I don't mean quantification of the assessment and of the the skills using the laparoscopic system. I mean, how do you really quantify it to patient outcomes? How can you show that it really is pushing that needle, making an effect? Yeah, that that comes, and we we haven't we haven't delved into this because there's a lot of it. Um, uh, but if anyone, especially that's, that's that's listening there, wants to see how the data comes out um, uh, in our platform, um, I, I may be able to pull it up in a moment, actually. Um, but you're spot on with that, Stuart. How you quantify it to a patient is thus. And this is why I was saying, still that disconnect. The stuff that 3D Life Prints does is great. They print them, the, the surgeon can look at the models, they can maybe have a go on them in analog. But if you then integrated that into the, the Totem platform and our simulators, that surgeon can go to a patient beforehand and they can say, I have done this exact procedure 15 times. When I started, I was moving my instruments with this precision. And I moved them this amount. There was this much acceleration and I spent this amount of time off screen. All, and this is what those things mean. 
by the 10th, which I just did this morning to warm up, I've improved by 80% because I'm now used to your anatomy and your procedure. So that in itself, the, the, the level of assurance that will provide to patients before they're going to an operation, especially ones with abnormal anatomy, is absolutely massive and it's completely objective. Um, the other thing about it is, because we can build in complications and, and, and trip hazards in the mm. simulated environment, the surgeon can experience those as they go along and the likelihood of them coming up in the theatre will then be massively reduced again and we've got the evidence to show that. So um, I think that that would be incredibly powerful for, for the patients. It's also incredibly powerful for the hospital systems yeah. and everyone running the, the system, which is um, we now know that this surgeon has done this procedure 15 or 20 times and actually they're, they're averaging they're averaging this in two hours. Normally we would have blocked out an entire day's theatre list for this. So we'll give them the half day. We, we can now squeeze in a second a second half day of operating. So that's brilliant for, wow. for um, service provision and, um, and scaling our health services, which is very important right now. That, that was a really, thanks for emphasizing that, because I think that is really one of the strengths in this. I mean, you know, when you link it to these patient outcomes, I mean, wow. Um, and what about other types of surgeries? Like, what are you guys looking at, like, down your, your pipeline? Yeah, I, um, I alluded to it a little bit. The, 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 the Totem platform is not only device agnostic, so I can put any brand of instrument into the lap trainer or the hysteroscopy trainer and use them. It's, it's modality agnostic as well, so we can apply it to robotics surgery, for example, um, which actually, it shouldn't be called robotic surgery. We should be calling it each of the different types of robots. It's Da Vinci surgery, Versia surgery, Dexter surgery, a few plugs for the, all those great uh, platforms there. Um, each of those has a different demand when it comes to the, the learning curve and the platform because they will have their own console and their own approach. Um, our platform and our technology can be applied to each of those, which is really exciting. So that's something that we're very much exploring. And we, we're well aware we're not sitting here going, we're the straight stick simulator guys. Um, we pick headedly want to stick to that because 95% of minimally invasive surgeries are done with straight sticks. Um, we're thinking about that future and being that partner there. And then there's the rest of there's the rest of the surgical specialties. Um, we, we've we've got things in the pipeline in neurology, orthopedics, uh, ENT, neurosurgery. You think about it. We plan to be there because again, until we have done that, we can't honestly say we've achieved our mission, which is of course become the world's partner for surgical training. It's fantastic, and I think one of the last questions we have here is, um, you, you know, just to emphasize again, like how does your soft or sorry, how does your platform differentiate? From other incumbent uh, technologies currently, you know, like surgical science or varimed, etc. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Chet. So, a couple of ways, um, and really, it's all those those barriers that we mentioned. Um, <clears throat> the first of those is the haptic realism. Um, we have completely shifted the paradigm with haptic realism and our approach to natural haptics, as we described with the the use of the soft tissues, <clears throat> excuse me, and the real instruments. That's one major major differentiator. The next then is this hub and spoke take home model. We've taken a technology that was previously a mainframe technology. So view those guys that you may have mentioned there as IBM. We've come along as Apple and we're putting super, super computers and super powerful computers in people's pockets like we are today. So that's how I would view the technology of Lap AR and Totem in terms of the level of disruption it's having to those incumbents. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's very exciting for us. Okay, um, well I guess on that note, I'd just like to really thank you guys for patching in. Um, you know, obviously Ben, you're in Austin, so not too far away, but Elliot is all the way in Manchester in the UK and it's about, what, quarter to 12 there, Elliot? Yeah, quarter to 12, and you can probably hear my, my voice is, is, is going after a, a, a long day of calls, so I'm sorry for becoming a bit croaky, but um, yeah, luckily I'm a night owl and, and with a team in the US, um, I'm quite used to being up at this time on calls, so thanks so much for having us this well, evening, we really appreciate it. You're that. also saying that, you know, your Manchester, Old Trafford is right next to where you live, right? And I think they were playing Europa League tonight, they won 3 0 against Sharif, so is it still noisy outside or has it calmed down a little bit? It's calm down a little bit, yes, but um, yeah, I live I'm very close to the stadium, so whenever they finish, I can't go anywhere because there's just um, it's just gridlock, it's just uh, bumper to bumper. But I think that's all that's all calmed down now, which is good. Well, that's good. Well, I think something better than seeing your team man you win three 0 is coming to pumps and pipes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to mention that <laughs> one more time. If we could just maybe finish with the slide, guys. Again, pumps and pipes is November the fifth in person at the Ion. 
and Avis Medica will be there as well as all the other participants. So please register now. We still have the early bird rates until November uh, the 3rd. So on that note, Ben, Elliot, thank you again for coming on the show and I look forward to seeing you guys in person soon. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks for having me, Stuart.